Welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokendra Kumar and today we're going to discuss central dogma of molecular biology. If you are a student of microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry, any, basically any area of biosciences, you might be familiar with central dogma of molecular biology. So this is a very basic concept uh, of molecular biology and I have used this uh, illustration, as you can see, I have designed this illustration to explain you the concept. Okay, so I have also written some of the points that I will be discussing here, and then we'll discuss the central dogma of molecular biology in detail. What are these different processes? And uh, I'm also going to show you another illustration where I have designed some structure of the these molecules. Okay, so uh, I want you to stay tuned and watch the full video because if you watch the full video that supports the channel and it helps me to reach out uh, as many as students as possible. So, all right, let's start discussing the central dogma of molecular biology. Point number one in this case that I wanted to discuss is we need to understand what are the underlying mechanisms. What are the different mechanisms that are involved in evolution. So when we are discussing about evolution, that means how a particular individual, let's say in this case, we are talking about humans, right? Humans, they are evolved from, let's say, microbes. So there must be n number of processes, n number of different kinds of biological processes that are involved in this, right? So what are those molecular mechanisms that are involved in the evolution of a cell? This is one of the important points. And initially it was not known. Then slowly, slowly scientists, they dig into the uh, cellular molecules and they found out there are important mechanisms, there are important processes that are involved in the exchange of the information. Okay. Let me erase that. I don't want to make a huge mess in this slide. Okay, so the second point is how that genetic information. So now we know that cell has this information stored in the form of genes. And, and the gene is composed of DNA, right? Deoxyribonucleic acid. And how that particular information which is stored in a gene is transferred with high accuracy. So this is an important point because if there is a process that is involved, that should be accurate enough to transmit that information from uh, one generation to another generation. And what is the mechanism of that process? So scientists were interested in identifying those basic molecular mechanisms and because of identifying these basic mechanisms, we are able to do amazing things. For example, CRISPR-Cas system, we, I, I'm, I'm sure that you are aware of that system. You can manipulate the genome of higher organisms because of the basic information that are the questions that were asked regarding these processes. So that is why the central dogma of molecular biology is important. And then another point is how the information is decoded. So you have the information stored in a molecule, per se in this case, we can say DNA molecule, the information is stored in the DNA molecule, how that information, that specific information is encoded inside the cell. What is the process that is involved in that, uh, in that uh, understanding that particular information, right? So, Overall, there is a complex biomolecular mechanism that is involved to answer these questions. So what was that specific mechanism uh, and uh, how we were able to identify that mechanism? <laughs> that complete mechanism is known as central dogma of molecular biology here. I have mentioned this as a heading of this specific slide, right? Now, the first experiment or I can say the set of experiments that led to the uh, 
the answering these questions was the the hypothesis that was proposed by James Watson and Francis Crick in 1953 and the X-ray diffraction analysis by Rosalind Franklin for the DNA molecule this molecule so Rosalind Franklin confirmed experimentally the hypothesis uh, that was proposed by Watson and Crick regarding the double helical structure of the DNA molecule. Now we know that there is a molecule that stored the information. Now how that information is transcribed or translated is, is a huge, you know, huge uh, research area. But basically this particular uh, uh, experiment that led to the discovery of DNA molecule initiated that particular research area. Now we are discussing about the central dogma. In, in the central dogma you have three points. So you need to remember these three points. First in the, is the DNA, second is the RNA and third is the protein. Okay. Now I, I have mentioned that the information is encoded in a molecule and that information needs to be there in a next cell so it needs the replication of that information right so the step one in central dogma will be the dna molecule is replicating and making another dna molecule right and that dna molecule has the same information that the parent cell has so step one here is the replication of that DNA molecule and then that that DNA molecule should transcribe the information in the form of RNA. So the second step in the central dogma is the transcription of that information in the form of RNA molecule because you cannot directly translate the information from DNA molecule. That is important point. You need to remember that point. So there is this intermediate point which is called as transcription, right? And that transcription point is the generation of the RNA molecule here. And the third point here that I am trying to mention is the translation. So when that information is translated in the form of RNA molecule, here, sorry, RNA molecule, the process is transcription. When the information is trans translated in the form of protein, that process is translation. Here. So you will have a functional protein molecule that will be generated from that mRNA molecule in this case. And RNA molecule, they also replicate. So I can write here that RNA replication is also an important point. And later we also found out that reverse transcription is also there. So the RNA can also, uh, you know, carry the information to form the DNA molecule. This is also known as complementary DNA molecule, cDNA molecule. So that process is known as reverse transcription. And this whole, this complete set of all the processes let me cover it up is the central dogma of molecular biology okay where you have dna rna and protein and uh, i have mentioned that when dna molecule replicates this is known as dna replication when protein uh, when protein is synthesized from rna molecule this is translation when rna is synthesized from DNA molecule, this is transcription. When DNA molecule is synthesized from RNA molecule, then in that case, the DNA cDNA is known as reverse transcription. So these are the important processes that are involved in the central dogma of biology. Now I'm going to show you another illustration where I have designed the molecules and I'm going to just fill it so that the uh, the central dogma is clear to you so we'll we'll go to the next slide and we'll discuss all that. right we are on the next slide and i hope that information 
uh, was not overwhelming and you were able to process that information. Here I'm just trying to show you the same information in the form of an illustration. So you can you can see you can clearly see that I have designed the DNA molecule here. So here this is the DNA molecule and you know that the DNA molecule has those base pairs that are interlinked together. Uh, those are adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uh, right, and this molecule stores the genetic information. Now, the stage one that we already discussed was the DNA replication, right? Here, I'll just write it down. DNA replication, where the DNA molecule is replicated, and at this point, you have the transfer of the information from DNA to RNA molecule. So here I'm trying to uh, show you the RNA molecule, single standard RNA molecule, right? And this process is known as transcription. And okay, so this is transcription when that information which is stored in RNA is translated to a functional protein molecule. And in this, in this case, what I'm trying to show you is the chain of amino acids. So as you, as you know that DNA has those base pairs, they are arranged and then one triplet code generates one amino acid, right? So you have this chain of five amino acids and that can constitute a functional protein so you have protein molecule here and this process is translation there is another step so later new processes they were in uh, uh, they were discovered for example reverse transcription right so here this process which is the conversion of uh, uh, rna from the dna is transcription and when it is reversed that the process means the process that involves the conversion of rna molecule to dna molecule is known as rt reverse transcription these are important you know when we when we discuss those techniques for example uh, rt pcr technique and we want to understand how protein are synthesized we do western blotting we we need to understand these processes in detail so i want you to remember these important uh, processes and then also you have rna replication right so one two three four right these are the important parts of central dogma. So now I hope that the central dogma as a complete concept is clear to you. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to ask your question in the comment section. You can also contact me uh, on the social media platforms. I'll try to answer your questions. And if you have some suggestions, you can also give me your suggestions. So now I'm going to show you the three dimensional structure of DNA molecule. And um, that is going to be interesting video. So let's jump on to that particular section of the video. All right. All right. So we are here. And we are looking at the structure of DNA molecule. I am visiting Protein Data Bank website. As you can see, I have found this article inside the website and it's it's amazing website. If you are interested in molecular biology and especially bioinformatics, Protein Data Bank is an amazing website and you need to explore each and every component of this website. So as you can see, they have the article that explains all the detail details of the DNA molecule, whether you're discussing type A DNA molecule, B DNA or Z DNA molecule, everything is given here. We are not going to go into the detail, but I promise to you that I'm going to show you the structure of DNA molecule. 
So I found out that there is the structure of DNA molecule available and there are other structures that you can also explore. So this is one of the structure and I have opened the, uh, the three-dimensional structure of this molecule and you can see how the base pairs they are arranged. So I personally like to visualize uh, the structures in my uh, PyMol software. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to download the PDB file and it's immediately going to open in the uh, PyMol software and you can see here, you can clearly see the double helix nature of the DNA molecule. This is where the central dogma of molecular biology started. Let me show you another picture. If I zoom in, you can see these red points. They are water molecules. And you can see these uh, green, blue lines. They are those uh, base pairs of DNA molecule. And then you have phosphate backbone. Clearly, you can see. Let me change this to a different type of the, uh, the view. I think let's use uh, this one. Okay, so now you can see the molecules, right? How they are paired. You can see these molecules. Fascinating, isn't it? It looks really good. So you can clearly see how the DNA molecule, how the structure of DNA molecule is arranged. It's fascinating. It's really amazing molecule, well-structured molecule. So initially then Watson and Crick, they proposed the model and finally the model was accepted. That led to the different discoveries, right? So this is uh, the model that I wanted to show you. I hope that I have motivated you to study molecular biology in detail, understand what are these molecules, what are these uh, uh, base pairs, how they are arranged, and I hope you're also going to explore the uh, the PyMol software. So with that note, I'll just conclude this presentation, and uh, I hope the video was helpful for you to understand the central dogma of molecular biology. I'll bring more videos on the same topic, so please stay tuned and support the channel. Till then, take care. Thanks.